Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 24 of Untapped. Got a lot of cool things to talk about today. First, can't wait to hear what's the latest update going on with Levi. Big update. I am, well, not really. I guess it is kind of big that I'm going to Kill Cliff FC, Fight, I think Kill Cliff Fight Club Wednesday for, I guess it's kind of like a tryout uh to to see if i can hang with those guys and then if so if i can't hang with them then i guess i'll be moving over to the other coast to train there full time so we'll see what happens with that it's wrestling so i haven't wrestled a ton the first practice is wrestling so i'm a little bit nervous about that but i'm confident that i can hang at least fit in tim tim i talked to tim about it and he was just basically like fit in don't crack anyone too hard because if you do they'll try and kill you <laughs> so just kind of try to fit in, pace yourself, and don't gas out. So that's the plan. Jeez, that's cool. He he thinks good of him. Yeah, he said. Did I did I send you the the messages that he's? Yeah, I think yeah, I, I got those. Yeah, he just yeah, said like good people. Yeah, I I uh from everything I've seen on Henry Hoof, seems like he's like top t- like top of the top world class from what I've heard from, from everyone. And then I've done a lot of research on that gym and it seems, especially for guys at 170 and 185, it seems like the the most amount of guys are at the top level are there. So it should be good. That's nice. The Gilbert Burns trains there. I think That's Usman right. was there. Ooh, um, who else? There's a ton of guys. Michael Chandler's there. Um, wow. Ian Gary. I think Ian Gary will be a really good guy for me to go with because he's young and similar style. Not not that I ha- really have a style right now, but <laughs> similar size as me. So that would nice. be nice. What, what is the try tryout process then? What do you what do you go through for that to try out? So it's a it's a they don't have like a pub it's not a public gym. It's only so they're I don't even think they have an amateur program. It's pros only. Wow from what it seemed like when I messaged him, he was like, it's a, you know, we don't really have a, like basically normal people come here. It's pros only. Um, but since you're coming from a professional sport, you kind of get the culture of pro like professional sports and the mindset. So yeah, we'll kind of see uh, basically if you can hang and I'm sure it's just, I mean, he doesn't know me from Adam. So he's probably just like, well, I mean, Right now, I bet he's thinking this pro baseball player thing. He's coming in here like he's getting ready to learn what this is all about. He do, he so, probably know. Does he know yet? He doesn't know yet. Then probably that you have some experience under Tim and Jakar and things like that, right? I told him. I told him that I trained under Tim for two years and I trained at the at the lab a little bit. Yeah. But I said I'm super raw. Like obviously don't know That's a lot. A way to enter. Man. And told him I'm a. For, from what I've seen when I go to other gyms too, they expect like they don't expect a lot. So yeah. when they see me train, they're kind of like, "Oh, how long you been training?" And then I tell them like, "Oh, okay," because they I think they have this mindset of like, "Oh, you're a baseball guy." Like yeah. he probably doesn't know anything at all. But just being athletic, and I've trained jujitsu for not a long time, but for a little bit, about three years now, right? Almost. Yeah. So I. I know enough to at least hold my own. I'm a little nervous about wrestling because I de- I like don't know how to wrestle that well. Nah, and... you got good wrestling. You wrestled a little <laughs> in junior high, right? Uh yeah, not very long though, and I wasn't very good. But I think I, I, especially... think, I think you improved a lot. Your wrestling, your takedown started to get pretty solid, especially and your takedown defense is super good. I have good take. I feel like I have good takedown defense. My takedowns are not great. I think, especially because being so tall, oh, it's yeah. a little bit tough. But I have strong yeah. hips. That's what I expect to just like be ready to sprawl hard and then create scrambles and just show that you're about it. Like just show that you're down to scrap. You're not going to quit. I'm yeah. probably going to get smashed, but just get smashed, get back up, get right back in there, and just show that you're willing to work and you're not afraid of these guys. Man, what a what a blessing to have Tim give advice to you because, man, I, I can't think of a better person to get advice from in how to best enter into what you're doing right now. Yeah, he was he he said that like 
don't go in there and cr start cracking people because if you do <laughs> he knows you <laughs> yeah he's like if you do they're gonna try to hurt you yeah i That's feel like smart. you just what you just keep up your cardio with these guys and then hang with them and oh, they'll yeah. see i feel like I'll, most of the ufc guys maybe it's because we don't see them wrestle that much they're not the best wrestlers as it is you know yeah. so i I've trained jujitsu with some guys in the UFC that I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. You know what I mean? MMA is a whole different world than yeah. just like straight jujitsu though. But I guess it probably is a good thing that we're grappling because I have the most experience in grappling. True. Yeah. And you were, you were trying to with takedowns too. I think your takedowns got, you, you went a long way with the takedowns, especially with the, the MMA wrestling and the no gi. Cause you were, we have a lot of, I mean, the lab and kind of spilling into our gym too. We have smaller guys. I mean, I, I think the lab has got to be by far and above the best in the world for 135, 145. So trying to take down smaller guys, I mean, that's rough. Yeah, that's what I that's what the thing that I think is gonna be really good too is like Arizona is obviously really, really high level, but most of the guys are smaller. Yeah. Where this gym it seems like it's a little bit bigger. I also emailed um, American Top Team, too. So nice. we'll we'll see what they say as well. I mean, right now I would like to train at Kill Cliff. It just seems like a a really good fit. Yeah. But if if that doesn't work out, then I emailed Top Team uh, as well, and they they do have an amateur program. So we'll see what they say as well. I I also can't imagine like it not working out in your favor because just you showing up and then maybe mm -hmm. you go back and train locally or whatever for, you know, a couple months. And then, you know, you, you pull back up with them or you try and find out a way to, to weasel back in, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. I, sh I feel like you, you should be fine no matter what. Yeah. yeah. If they don't let me, I'm going to go to masters and then talk shit about him like Colby. <laughs> 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 that's awesome i think man the way you're going about it too i think it's i think it's kind of going to be the next gen thing because seeing what sugar does he's so he's so cerebral and so savvy and smart with with communication with business how to go about business and this is what you're entering into what you're doing is is a business side of things and how how many fighters are contacting people or emailing people or getting advice or trying to figure out the best way to enter in there. Most fighters just drop into a gym and just do their thing. You know what I mean? Right. I think, and I talked to my dad about it a little bit. My dad was like, if he just gets his eyes on you and he sees you and he talks to yeah. you and he sees like what you're about, wow. like yeah. it should be, it should, you know, you should be fine. And then on the flip side, there is a chance that I go in there and I realize like, whoa, this is a whole nother level that I'm not ready for, which <laughs> If that's the case, that's something that like needs to be. I need to be aware of. So either way, it's going to be a good thing. That's a good attitude to come yeah. in. But see, your character is just going to shine through. That's the thing that's that probably like Tim was kind of saying. Keep it, keep your character good, and man, they're gonna. It, it's gonna go good. But plus, God is leading. If it's not the right spot for you, you'll be in a better spot. Yeah, I didn't think he would respond. I just DM'd him, and then two days later, he Friday night, he was like uh are you a pro fighter and i was like no and then i kind of <laughs> explained the situation and he was like okay well let's come out here for a couple of days we'll see you train and then we'll see what we can do and i was like okay i'll be there on wednesday that's so cool that just it's a good reminder too it doesn't hurt to reach out it doesn't hurt to ask reach out give things a shot you know what i mean right the worst thing that's what i told her like the worst thing he could have done is not respond right or the worst thing that can happen i go there I get my ass beat. They say no, and whatever. At least I give it a shot. Yeah, hundred percent. Man, that's exciting. I know. Yeah, I was I'm, gonna say it's really exciting. Dude, I had to order wrestling shoes though, because I don't have wrestling shoes. Because <laughs> in jiu-jitsu, don't wear shoes. I I don't know that they'll wear shoes there, but I ordered yeah. them just in case. What'd you order? What kind? What type? Just uh a6 something oh, yeah. like that. I, don't really I just ordered the ones that could get here the quickest because <laughs> dicks didn't have any <laughs> and so i had to like and memorial day so i had to go yeah, on amazon sweet. and get some <laughs> dang uh, what's new with you mr dane i know i caught you on uh chance's fight last night 
Yeah, dude, that was awesome. That was awesome. Man. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've never seen that. Le- Levi, we were watching Chance. I, I can't. I think you know who he is, or might have. I don't know. If yeah, yeah. Know. But he uh he had a a, a Muay Thai fight last night, and it and uh, he it, during the, the fight. I think it was the third round. Yeah, he, it was like he right at the beginning of the first the round. ropes and broke the ropes. I've never seen that happen. No before. way. <laughs> Oh yeah, they, they had to like take a pause and everything like that, like fifteen minutes or so, and then resume. Like the in the Muay Thai yeah. rounds are only like what three minutes, Kyle? I think like, so. Yeah, yeah. It was just funny that it was stopped for fifteen minutes. The guys were just walking around, and we're we're in the chat thing, and it's funny because Ara saw that it was live, so she put it up on our our uh, projector screen. So we had we had Kai, Luke, and Ara, they created accounts and they were just screwing around in there, like making weird comments and stuff. And it's kind of funny. And the dude that was filming, he kept getting pushed out of there. Those re- they, they'd push, he's trying to follow Chance in and they stalked him and then he tried to record inside and they stopped and it was a fun <laughs> process to watch. <laughs> he won? Like did, was that considered like knockout or what? No, they reset. Uh, they reset him again, and then Chance ended up winning by a split decision. But I really feel he yeah dominated that fight. Same. Really. He landed yes. a lot of good shots. His I I want to see him. I haven't had a chance to to communicate with him, but man, his it felt it seemed like in there his grappling with the clinches really was giving him some edge too i I still i really want to see him do mma i think he seemed to be geared his body and the way he was moving for it yeah Yeah, he trained under tinkino for a while yeah and then i heard him say in an interview he got kicked i didn't know he got kicked out of fight ready we got to hear that story that's fun (laughs) oh really because he was coaching there that's right yeah helping coach their amateurs or something (laughs) yeah i don't know about that dana no 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 i don't know what happened (laughs) I mean, either way, I knew I knew he wanted to go back to San Diego to like be with his family and like yeah. kind of train cl- nearby his family, kind of similar to what Levi's doing right now. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, and obviously it's working out for him. So happy for him. Heck yeah. yeah. The guy that he was training with at Fight Ready, I, I sent that kid because he was looking for a meal prep, Clay Austin Clayton. Oh, he yeah. Just, he just turned pro. He's fighting in the same thing as Tommy is. Oh, that's crazy for the fight fusion in Montana. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Hey. He's fighting soon too, I think, up there. His his pro debut. I was impressed with that league because we watched uh their last let's see, JJ, Tommy, and who else? Uh David from our gym was on the first one, and then Tommy did another one. And they do they do a great job on there. Cause some of these you know, you got like a rage in the cage when they give you the live feed. It's just like, oh no, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, <laughs> it seemed like rage in the cage was panicking for fighters this last event. I think that's oh, gonna that yeah, whole thing's gonna flip upside down. Oh man, they're just uh, Jim. Jimmy was saying he would never fight with them again after his experience. Yeah, those those yeah. guys were rough, man. I I message. I guess it'll all depend on the Killcliff thing, but I messaged Jakar and Tim about i said let me know 170 or catch weight 175 180 for september and they said like jacar was like uh, i think they have something coming rough has something coming in september so i'll let you know but i think if i get in at kill cliff maybe things will change a little bit yeah because they might, might you get into the circuit in florida too for fights probably right yeah and i would assume that they'll kind of take a little bit of control kind of like that's true My, yeah. you know what i'm doing or maybe they say you need to fight now maybe they say you shouldn't fight for like who knows i don't know right right overall i know i'm biased but i'd always i'd always uh get a little advice from tim <laughs> yeah for sure you know what i mean he's just so good at this this stuff man with just watching with how he talks to to uh deals with stuff with sugar and with other fighters and things like that but i mean obviously yeah. they've been super successful over there so they i'm sure they know what they're doing that's what my dad said about because i was talking to my dad like oh, well it's going to be a little bit expensive to go train in arizona like each, each fight went up cost me like probably f- between five and like eight thousand dollars with living with cost of living and everything yeah but my dad was like it's 
to have Tim and all that, it's worth oh. it. So you might, it's no different than like the money I spent on baseball for training. It's the same right. thing, but just in a different aspect. Yeah. And the, to be connected kind of to the lab, to some of the guys over there. I know, I think September is a good idea because they're so focused on uh, uh sugar spike right now in August. Yeah. I think a lot of the guys, I was talking to a couple of guys yesterday that, I was like that they were like, oh, I really don't want to, you know, do anything before that. And I was like, yeah, I think so. Cause you know, if you want, if you want Tim involved in the fight, then it's, that's just too much for him at this point. They need to just be hyper-focused on stuff with sugar right now, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Two, there's really no, I would like to just get one fight in before the end of the year. Yeah. There's really no rush. That's um, true. Even if, even if I don't, get one in but I, w- I would just like to have one under my belt going into 2024 and kind of hit the ground run and maybe get, try to get two or three maybe four in next year that'd be good i i really like what um what tommy is doing over here he's he's ta- he's really followed advice of tim in that in that area and he's i think he's taking more fights and not you know he's kind of managed his his fight taking at the right time and man, he's, he's looking good. I, I think he's, I think the plan is for him. He'll take one more fight and then move straight to the UFC. Really? That'll yeah. be sweet. That'll be freaking sweet. Cause he's put oh. on some pretty good performance, like oh. not just fights, but like actual yeah. performances as well. He's doing, he's so smart with like the character. Uh, Dana probably might have not seen him and he's got, he's got kind of, he created a character, Tommy Gunn. It's kind of a mafia guy and he's, all of the stuff he's doing, like, you know, the way he comes out and is the way he communicates with the crowd. He's, he's really done a good job, like uh, preparing for that part of it. Yeah. I think Sean has really set like the blueprint for that whole situation, man. That's so true. It's fun. It's fun watching. I don't know if you guys kept up with, uh, I love going in and looking at sugar's Twitter with Sterling. (laughs) It's like this, this guy Sterling is he's he's pretty cool. I mean it's I mean he's not he's a great fighter and stuff, but he did, these guys like like Sterling and Cejudo, they just don't understand humor. Like right. Like, for example, I don't know if you saw the one where uh, Sterling writes because he was taking some heat for you know getting into it with Dana White and stuff, and people were really that was he was just digging himself a hole. So he made a little Twitter post that. You know, I just want to thank all of the guys at USC, da da da, Sean, and he met Sean Shelby. Well, Sugar responds right away. You're welcome. You know, as a few as the Sean being, thanks. The, you know, yeah. thanks there. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a, hilarious. He just schools him every single time, no matter what shot Sterling takes. He just flips it and just crushes him. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting too to see if Algerman, Algerman, he might come out and try and fight emotional because of mm. the whole situation, which is. I think plays into Sean's favor for sure. See, if, I still, I still wonder if he's going to show up, get a little injury or something. Yeah, I saw Henry posted something like, "Let me know, I'm ready." If he pulls yeah. out, I'll be ready. Yeah, the, the man, the way Sugar is, man, he's he's just getting better and better. Those those guys, man, I just don't think they have the. I think he's just he's just. I, I was watching the the yawn fight again ah man he just sean missed his it, knocking out just completely devastating yawn with that second knee cracked him with that first one and that second one missed him by this much so that would have just completely mm-hmm. and I, I honestly don't think yawn he took a beating more than people realize in that fight i don't think he's been the same since that fight we watched I, mean, I watched that fight with my bad i watched that fight with my dad last night as well wow and Re that's the first time I've rewatched it, and like rewatching it, scoring it round for round, you could tell that Sean won. Like when you're looking at the fight, like when I watch it, I think because there's a little bit of like a connection with Sean too. You don't want to see him get yeah. hurt or anything like that. Oh, I know it. <laughs> so you're kind of, when he gets hit, you're kind of like oh, but then when you can kind of rewatch it and detach from like emotions, then it was a lot easier to score that way. And like okay, he. Because my dad was like, he obviously won the first round, and then yeah. he definitely won the. I think it was the third round. Third round, yeah, yeah. 
So when you're scoring it that way, round for round, it's like, okay, he it was pretty obvious. But what, when I watched it the very first time, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're so right about it. That's what got me, too, is like seeing Sugar just even take a shot that kind of knocked him down or whatever. But then you look at it, his he was so good at scrambling and just bouncing right back up again, getting into good positions. Yeah. And the commentary, too, they were – it seemed like yes. the commentary wasn't on Sugar's side. No, no. It was like every time they took him down, it was like, oh, man, some timely takedowns for Jan. Yeah. It was like he was down yeah. for two seconds. Exactly. No, and I one of it. the takedowns, I think it was at the end of the round, Sean tried to take him down, but he kind of like slipped. But it was it was kind of like the round's almost over. I'm just going to take a shot. And yeah, that was it. But the commentaries were like, Oh man, what a timely takedown for Jan. I was like, come on. And then meanwhile, he's doing nothing with it. Sugar's throwing up triangle attempts and things. Yeah. Right. They're never really on his side. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think, think it, it might be uh Cormier. He's uh... Yeah, I hate listening to DC. I gotta <laughs> mute I gotta mute it when he's on there sometimes. Man. It's the okay. wrestling, I think. The old school wrestlers. Yeah. Yeah, that's so it. Boring. So we finished up, we finished up uh, radiation this week. Right. On a How are you feeling? Tuesday. It's been a little bit rough cuz this weekend is is the cuz it, it the radiation it gets you later. You do the radiation and then the effects go it go longer. So when you're getting it, it doesn't do anything to you, but it takes time for it to work on the thing. Um the great news is that we're done with it. It was done Tuesday. I'm so grateful it's done. And then we went from just baseball size tumor, little tumors going up above my ear into my collarbone and stuff. And it's all wiped out. It, it, it's such a relief to have that gone. I mean, even doing stuff like shaving, I couldn't even shave around that thing. So it's, it's crazy how good it worked. Awesome. So overall, you're feeling a lot better. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of tough because like yesterday, it I did a chemo Thursday. It's really I've been in chemo the, the whole time through the radiation, so it um it uh I met it up pretty good before this one this morning. I couldn't. I was really struggling. I was like, oh crap, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna make it. But usually, once I start, once I get moving, get my feet on some grass, get in the sun, I took been using a lot of kratom in the past week. Uh, going real real high with it probably more than I should but I'd rather do that than use go into any kind of narcotics and, and things like mm -hmm. that but it's kind of like I do I'll do something and I just have to manage it I'll pay for it a little bit later but the uh it's kind of like the radiation it probably can't see here but it gives you like kind of like second degree burns and then I got graft versus hose so it gets under the skin and you can even see there's there's wounds where where the laser went in and in different parts but it kind of feels like there's a there's a, a little jagged knife in your your throat so when you swallow when you, it's it's okay. a little hard to eat yeah i gotta i just gotta thank god for meds <laughs> 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 i can talk but then like the sleeping is pretty tough um there's a uh, the chemo is is always weird too because it uh like yesterday, I, I was able to get up, up and around and uh, these guys, the guys uh, in our gym, Jimmy, um, Ezekiel, I think you got to know Ezekiel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. E Ezekiel, there's Mike over there. Uh, they were, they, they've been putting a lot into their, they're starting a new business with uh, doing uh, desserts with uh, mushrooms. So I saw them. Uh... Ezekiel so Instagram or something. Yeah, they were so excited because they were like, oh, we it was so they're just I'm just so grateful for so many people in our community because they're like, we know you've been going through chemo and we want to give you something, uh something to help you. And it, it's crazy because they made these really cool cheesecakes and chocolates and watching those guys who've never cooked anything before, just in the kitchen, just arguing about how to <laughs> get it together and everything. And the whole mushroom culture is interesting because it's kind of gray area. I don't think they're, you know, I know it's not completely legal, right? I don't even know where it is, but you see in other states where it's totally legal now. And 
you know, how much, how much it can help people. It just, the same thing with marijuana. It's a shame they can't, it's a hard one to make it measurable. I was thinking a lot about this is that it's hard to measure. One reason it's not in medical like marijuana is because it's so variable in what it does to each person. Um, I know Dana has always given me really good wisdom on this area. It is, it, you know, you might get one person who takes a certain strain and it does something completely different to another person. So in the medical field, it's hard to measure those things. How can you pinpoint it down and come up with a formula that each person can get it? But at the same time, this stuff helps me so incredibly much to get help so many, many, many cancer patients. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's a tough one because... I don't, I don't think I know enough about any of that to, I'm not sure how all that works, but for, I would, I would assume any type of drug that is quote unquote drug that is not made in a lab is going to be better for the body than something that's brewed up in a lab. Right. Yes, right. But I think in, this is a guess in order to get those to react the same every single time there might be some sort of like chemical thing that you would have to do. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I like those thoughts. I'm curious to hear what Dana thinks. He's a, I, I love hearing Dana talk about this kind of stuff, man. You're one of the smartest I people mean, I've ever met on all this. No, I mean, as far as what I've seen in the past with like, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the toad. <laughs> have we talked, talked about the toad before? Yeah. Yeah. 5-MeO-DMT but like that's that um, uh, they synthesize that now in like other countries and like Mexico and stuff like that so you don't have to like wow. touch the toad and, and whatnot but that's the only way I'm pretty sure you could like measure out the dosage of anything the only, I mean I guess with with mushrooms like functional mushrooms like lion's mane and all that type yeah, of stuff like you just grow you just grow those and you pay attention maybe to how you room the, the first time it has to be in a you know enclosed space where you know the humidity is being taken care of you know the the temperature of the place all that sort of stuff so i guess there's ways that you could get it to where you're in control of, like you you set the setting for it right so you just pay attention to that time and time again but from the from the outset of like dosing mushrooms i i doubt anybody would have any sort of idea of what the dosage would be you know yeah. because the, the lion's mane and stuff like that that you can buy like in whole foods or sprouts or maybe gnc any type of health and wellness place though it seems like they have those pretty dialed in as far as like how right. you're going to react yeah but i think maybe when you're starting to mess with the psyche each person's mental state is going to be a little bit different. So then True. where are you at? If you're taking something and you're maybe the last week you've been stressed out, you've yeah. been a little bit depressed compared to a week that you're happy, go lucky and everything's going good. Now, maybe they affect you different based on the, like how you're doing as a person. Maybe it's not so much the supplement. Maybe it's more the circumstance of like you're living. That's a good point. Yeah, and I know in, like if you're, I know if I, in like if I'm, go ahead. If I'm all pissed off or whatever and I take right. something, then maybe it's gonna send me down this spiral. But if I'm happy go lucky, everything's going good and I take it, it's just like drinking alcohol. Like if you're gonna drink alcohol and I'm all depressed, then it's just gonna make you more depressed. Good but good. if I you go out to the club and you're drinking alcohol with your boys, now you're all like hooping and hollering. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I think probably the setting has something to do that, and the person, person to person, it's going to be different because this person's mental state. It, I think it's just a little bit. It depends on the person. I think I, I I don't think they're for everyone. I think it's probably super necessary in like your case, Kyle, where it's helping you with your health and stuff like that. Right. But I think it gets a little bit sketchy when people are just messing around, playing around with them. Uh, I think that's probably why it's, it stays illegal. Yeah. And, and at smaller doses, you know, just like THC, 
if if I were to eat an edible at two and a half milligrams, it's not really gonna affect me psychoactively. Like it's not gonna affect my 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 um sort of brain state, but it it will affect my body with the terpenes and whatnot. So maybe that's the same for mushrooms. I would say microdosing, you don't get as much of a psychoactive effect at really small doses. And it's true. Um, from a yeah. stress standpoint, though, from a like if you're going through surgery or like college, chemo or whatever, like with your stomach to just relieve stress that I mean, it's got to be better than taking an oxy or something like that. That's been my experience. And then again, everybody might be different, too. I've met some people that seem to do pretty well on oxys. But then again, it seems like the people that do well on them, they end up having a dick. It's hard, harder for them to get off of them that's they the, might do too well on them yeah that's the one thing that gets me is is coming off this stuff like yeah oxy worked pretty good but i gotta measure what stress do i get under when when i'm coming off of this like the the thing about this this whole radiation stuff is is i've been kind of reflecting on it a lot and i'm, I'm kind of got a, a glad i got a little extra time today to kind of think about what you know so reflecting on the past week because there was, I kind of wanted to say too, there was a, in the last two weeks, two or three weeks since I've been doing this radiation thing, there's been some, some moments where I, I really went through it, where I was really thing the beginning where this tumor had got, gotten into where the head was, I was getting dizzy. Then I'm thinking, man, how far did this get into my brain? You know, I can't at nighttime, sometimes I can't breathe. I can't, but it's kind of like being in a jitsu and you get stuck and you can't breathe and then your heart races and mm -hmm you know, stuff like that. And I'm thinking about, is this going to be the end, you know, taught even having, you know, and then it, you get on medication and then <clears throat> they require somebody to drive me. So it's hard for me to, to have just anybody drive me to those things. So Ara, Ara is driving me. And then one day I'm kind of like telling her, Hey, you know, this, we need to have talks about what we're going to do if, with the business and things like that. She doesn't, that's hard on her. So there's all these elements going on where, but, it, you know, now I've got all this stuff going on with the chemo. Like I have to stay, I'm in this place now with the chemo where I got to kind of stay close to a, a toilet and there's a lot of pain and things like that. But every time I think about that, I, I make myself think about, man, I had this baseball thing going into my, the side of my head and man, radiation got rid of it. What, what a crazy relief. I'm so, I'm so relieved right now. And like to have, uh, to be able to utilize some of this, this medication Kratom is a big one. It's another, it's another plant. Um, I can use Kratom. I can use uh, my, like Dan was saying, the microdose of mushrooms seems from, from my body, just the tiny bit it is to reduce the other medications that I need. And it's, if anything, in terms of, I try to analyze something medically, what does marijuana do medically for me? It's, it's only helped me with nausea and uh, appetite. It hasn't helped with pain, but mushrooms have really only, they've helped me reduce my medication pretty much associated with like tumor pain. It seems whenever I get tumors, uh, uh, the, the mushrooms help me, but there's a verse that I, that I hit. It's in uh, Philippians three. It says, forgetting what's behind. And you know, I better not, I better, better not screw this one up <laughs> Let me see here real quick. I know I got it down here somewhere. All right. I do not consider myself yet taken hold of it. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the gold and run the prize, for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So I don't consider myself yet to be taken hold of something that got me, you know, in the past. And I'm going to forget what's behind because I had these times where I'd get nightmares about the whole process of the radiation and there's meds going on and stuff. And I noticed, I noticed that the more I find something to trigger me, like, man, what a relief. Let's forget about what was behind. And let me, let me strain on towards the head. I, I get to, I get to be on a podcast with you guys. You know what I mean? I get, I get to focus on those things. And I noticed I've been coming across that this kind of thing, like we've all been there. I'm grateful for you guys. Probably if I, I'm the one who talks too much on, on the podcast or whatever, but you come across these people that, that, um, they, they haven't learned yet when when to stop talking, for example. And that seems to, I've been coming across this a lot lately. And that for some reason, 
they no matter what you do you try to you try to even erupt give cues or whatever but they're not interested it's 90 to 90 you know 90 percent of the conversation they're gonna they're gonna talk and it seems like a person like that is usually stuck on what is behind them there i was kind of analyzing that the people that i know they're stuck on what's behind them maybe an accident that happened to them or they want to talk about the past and it, it's crazy because it, it just shows us even in relating to people that when we get stuck on on what have all oh, the victim mode or whatever then we end up isolating ourselves more because we become a person who's not trying to connect with people in a healthy way right i even see that with like myself <laughs> when I kind of reflect on myself, when I have conversations with people, sometimes I'll call people on the phone and I'll be like, fuck, did I even like, did I even ask what, what was going on with them? And just maybe I don't even, maybe it's not even coming from a bad place or whatever, but I call them or they call me, I tell them all about me and I'm like, okay, I gotta go. But normally that stems from something else that I'm going, you know what I mean? Like, I'm stressed out about something. I'm feeling insecure about something. I'm yeah. What I maybe I just need somebody to rant to or whatever. Good point. But to yeah. kind of like zoom out and be like, oh shit, I didn't even like with my parents. I do. I think with parents it's hard because you're so used to them calling and checking on you. Yeah. That you're you're not really used to like checking on them. That's true. Yeah. Because as a kid, it's like well, they're my parents. They're, you know, they're fine. I don't need to check on them. But now I'm trying to be, I'm especially trying to be better about that. Like, okay, you can get your spill out, but also like ask about how they're doing, ask about, you know, because not that my parents are getting old, but at some point yeah, it's going to be flipped, you know what I mean? And I'm going to be the one that needs to be calling them, checking on them rather than them calling me, check, you know what I mean? That's so true. Yeah. I've been calling and checking in on my parents the last like year and a half, two mm -hmm. years now, just like realizing how much more I call them than they call me, you know, but yeah. definitely I, I noticed in conversation when I start talking a lot, I can hear usually it's me talking about me spewing like excuses about why I didn't get this or that done. And that can be a good thing for me because I can notice myself saying it and just get on a little rant of like, yeah, well, I didn't do this because of that and that because of this. And it's like, I finished that sentence with, sorry, it sounds like a lot of garbage, but it is at the end of the day. It's like, there's a lot, of, sometimes there's a lot of garbage you need to spill. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes I'll be talking. Yeah. Go ahead, Kyle. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Sometimes I'll be talking and I'll realize stuff about myself. Like I'll be t telling somebody something and I'll just like, whoa, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> did I like what am i even saying right now right yeah i guess i i was thinking that that there's times when we do need to get out our our, our stuff and somebody needs to just listen and it's good to have people like that or there's times when we just need to listen and let those people get out and i, I think two females it's a little different with them they need to they they need to get that stuff out maybe you know sometimes i i'd rather it be to another female because they're on the same page or whatever but it's it, there's situations or that but it, so I guess there's there's uh it gets tough sometimes when you're around people that you have to be and a lot of times it's going to be males where there is no there's it's always in that mode you know what I mean that and then that that person becomes that kind of person becomes it's either like dang it how do I how do, how do we get them they're not gonna you know we might give little cues but like for example like you guys are so good at picking up cues about communication what you know if somebody's communicating you know you know you got the cues about where to go but some people just don't have that and i've been kind of analyzing that and it just it's not, i was just thinking at each i wonder how much of it's rude in that whole like victim stuff you know what i mean yeah i think a lot of it's victim mm -hmm. like the they want you they want somebody to feel bad for them um but also i think it it makes conversations hard when you don't have much in common that's true when it's like if we're mm. sitting here talking and i'm a yeah soccer player but no nobody knows anything about soccer and i'm sitting here rambling on about soccer like me when i'm talking i was telling my parents about this like baseball was a little bit hard for me because the things that they do outside of baseball are like not the things that i do right 
MMA is a little right. bit easier. Jiu-Jitsu is a little bit easier because the people are doing outside of it's it has nothing to do with jujitsu or mma or whatever but outside of the room we're doing similar things it's we're true. like in baseball outside of the field i was a little bit of an outcast like we aren't doing similar things right so then yeah. i go to the field and i want to talk about what i'm doing and they want to talk about what they're doing and i don't care about what they're doing and they don't care about what i'm doing so we're just not talking <laughs> <laughs> much it got to do with that is because when the sport changed so much too probably when you were when you were started playing at five years old or or whatever age the sport was it was a little bit different maybe in terms of and now it's it, it's become more it may, it, you know you know more about this but the you you changed too but the the way the sport went and everything it's it's be, Become a very more of a uh, a culture where it's kind of just hard. You got to be in that baseball mindset and culture. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe it's more in that way. <laughs> kind of hard to explain the culture. It's more like a. I don't know. It's like the country club. Like, yeah, there you go. Ooh, yeah, we're gonna go to the. We're gonna go. We're gonna drink a couple of beers. We're gonna play golf. We'll play some video games and, like, that's all cool, whatever. But that's it. Just kind of wasn't what I was into. And there's ex- ex- exceptions for sure. And I think at the big league level, it, there would have been more commonalities. But I think because MMA, you're forced to train and you're forced to recover and you're forced to eat healthy and you're forced to kind of live this martial arts lifestyle. Yeah. If not, you're not going to make it because you're going to get hurt or you're just not going to be able to train. So oh, people yeah. are doing similar things because maybe – because they want to or maybe they don't want to but they're forced to because in order to survive in that room you you have to be doing these things that's one reason i like i, I do really like him and i love jujitsu and then i i like mma a lot because you can't really be a hobbyist in mma you gotta be if you're gonna participate in any level in mma and you want to hold your own in mma you gotta be tuned in on all that stuff yeah too i think like you're not gonna just be a hobbyist and go get your go get like a shin to the face. <laughs> you know what I mean? People aren't just yeah. gonna be signing up to get the shit kicked out of them. You can't you can't really MMA, you can't like fake it till you make it, you know? You can't not yeah. kind of be in love with it. Yeah, I've been trying to train a couple times this week and I went, I'm paying for it today. I went and trained yesterday, but man, I heard I heard a rumor that Dana might be coming to train a little bit at the gym. Yeah, yeah, I talked to I talked to my boss about coming in a bit later on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, and then uh, I hit up JX to make sure those classes are still going on. So, yeah, definitely, I'm gonna I'm gonna come in on Tuesday, come in on Thursday, see what happens, and um, yes, yeah, we'll we'll see. Honestly, if 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 I'm noticing that I'm like back in love with it again. I wouldn't mind. I'd probably be able to go to. I can't make it to the the, the late classes in in uh, Peoria, but I could make them t- in Tempe because uh, my work's way closer to t- Tanquino. So, um, Tank's got yeah. a gym too. It's oh sick. yeah, I want to visit yeah. that. <laughs> so Yo, I'm interested about this gym out here or Kill Clip because I don't think they have. It's not like a jujitsu. It's all MMA. Wow. It's like only MMA. Incredible. so everything's geared towards so there'll be no like gi class or no yeah yeah it'll all just be in i'm i'm interested to see too like are they wrestling with gloves on or are they not wrestling right. like because it's only it's only a mma school that seems to make sense if you want to be an mma then you're training you train the grappling you train wall fighting you train those elements but it's all mma based yeah I think too it will actually help. I think MMA is a little bit more simple when it comes to techniques because there's only so many things that you can do when the gloves are on and people are trying to punch you in the face. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure there there are certain techniques like for that specific style, but like jujitsu is very complex when it comes to technique and there's always some of the stuff that the black belts are doing. It's like, what the hell was that? (laughs) And I'm sure that's also the same in MMA, but it seems like a little bit more simple when it comes to the grappling stuff, especially. 
yeah, where conditioning and timing and that kind of stuff makes a makes a lot more difference. Yeah. I'm pumped though. We'll see. Heck yeah. That's beautiful. What else How you guys got going here? I lost uh, track of time. A little a little less than an hour right now. That's fire to me. Heck yeah. I'm trying to think what oh uh next week uh Ezra. I think we got Ezra as a guest. There's a lot of oh, nice. we got a lot of cool guests to get in. Um I was thinking maybe we could get Levi up on a TV. We have a TV in the shop. Is that possible, Dana, to do that? We're get him Yeah, we should be able to do that. Basically, we okay. just we should be able to HDMI um my computer to the TV. I mean yeah, well, I mean, we'll figure it out. I uh, whatever it is, I was thinking we can get like how Ariel does it. Oh yeah, true. That'd that. be sick. How he does like a call in or whatever. All right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. You guys Maybe. see Tim on Ariel's? Yeah, I, I did. That was fire. That was good, man. It was a good one. He, I saw Ariel said he was like, I got m- the most comments for Tim out of all my the people I had on, and he That's- had Hulk Hogan, Mackenzie yeah. Dern. He had a lot of people on. I went I went home and I was like, because I, I was telling Ara later that day, because I was on the Red Hawk recap, and then literally he was on Ariel just like two hours later. I was like, I was on, I was that the same day. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk yeah, Hulk was being on there. I watched your guys' podcast too. It was good. Oh man, that was so fun. It was yeah. so fun to be be on there with with Ezra and I went in there. I was it's weird because I was feeling good the day before. I had a great talk with Tim. And then when I went in on that podcast, I was like, oh, crap, it was really hard to talk. So, it was, you know, sometimes I, I just didn't. But I but Brendan in that. I don't know if you guys saw that radiation mask. I brought in that that thing on onto the show. Yeah, that was, go fire, check it out. that was a fire pod. Ezra's on there, too. Yeah, I can't wait to get in, into it with. Have you met Ezra, Dana? Mm-mm. Oh, he's you're going to love it. Dana will like him a lot. Oh, yeah, man. He's dialing. Kyle, Kyle, maybe we'll get you sitting behind the the desk at at the recharge center. We'll get you actually like uh actually Ariel. like Ariel. <laughs> yeah. Be sick. That's a good <laughs> idea. We can get I even thought about putting the desk with changing things up in that room and putting the desk where the uh uh mural is. So we could have the desk there and then we have the mural and then put the TV up maybe set somehow, you know what I mean? But mount it on the wall or something. I'm sure Dan will come up with a good idea. Yeah, we'll switch it up. <laughs> I like that. That sounds fun. I got fish yeah. jumping behind me. No way. <laughs> yeah, we went deep sea fishing today. We caught like 30 fish. Jeez. Shit. Yeah, that's, that's what we're eating for dinner. Looks nice. like there's a baseball field behind you. Is that what that is? No, it's just a house. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. What a setup, though. What the heck? Mm-hmm. This would be a great setup for a podcast if we got all of us on there at the lake behind yeah. us. Look, we got a little we could do the pod right here. Let's see. Let me get this camera switched around. A couple chairs. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's super nice. I think we need to take a trip out there, Dana. I know I haven't been to Florida in a while. I'd be down. Oh uh, yeah. The other good. coast is supposed to be I haven't really been to the other coast that much. It's that gym's about 30 minutes from Miami. Oh. So I'm interested. It's supposed to be nice over there too. So it's expensive though, but okay, might as well go for it, you know. You get what you pay for sometimes. How far of a drive is it for you? Two and a half hours. Oh shoot. That's a good yeah. little drive. Yeah, so I'll have to move there for sure. All right on. But it'll be worth it. Heck yeah. It'll be worth it. Man, we'll see what hear what's next, and we look forward to next week getting Ezra on here. I'm thinking probably Sunday again if you guys are down. Yeah, that works. I'll I'll text you guys too and let you know how Wednesday goes as well. Sure. Just like come back with a couple black eyes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, guys! Well, hey everybody, thanks so much for hanging with us. Hope you have the best week ever. Out. Love Appreciate you. it. Peace, guys. Later. All right, peace, boys. Have a Talk good to you.